Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. And so I am really excited about today's video. I am going to share with you, I'm gonna flip through and share all the components of Sunlight's Language Arts Level 3, which in my opinion is the most important level when it comes to the elementary levels of language arts for Sunlight. And I will explain why in just a second, but basically my goal for this video is to show you inside the instructor's guide to explain some of the techniques for teaching writing, especially in this level as there's a unique way for teaching writing. And just to give you all the details and to show you all the books, all the level three readers that are associated with Sunlight, I'll show you the list of books. I'll flip through some of them so you can see kind of the level for the book so you can assess if this is a good level for your kids. So all of that but let's just flip the camera around and I will show you inside this whole program. I'm so excited to share it with you. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome if you're new here or welcome back if you've been coming for a while. Like I said, we are doing a flip through of Sunlight Language Arts a Level 3. So let's just do it. I'm gonna flip the camera around now, show you inside all of it and then I'll flip it back and give you a little bit of my thoughts. So I hope this is a very useful video for you. Okay guys, so I flipped it around and I'm gonna take you through the program and I've laid out everything that we need. The reader's over here, the instructor's guide here, including information about the creative writing, which we'll go into in detail, as well as the activity sheets. So I think I'll start with the instructor's guide. So let's do that first. Okay. So here is the level three instructor's guide from Sunlight. Just to take you inside a bit, here's a list of books, as well as some optional workbooks, which I will discuss in just a second. And then there are all the instructions that before you begin, kind of definitely to take a look through these because Sunlight does have a more unique program for language arts. And then it gets into section two, which is the schedule and the notes. Here is week one of language arts three. And you can see across the top, I have gotten the four day program. And then down the side, you have the different subjects, which in this case, the top one is spelling and phonics. The middle one here is handwriting, vocabulary development, readers, and then creative expression. And then it also takes you to the bottom where there's a weekly overview and it gives you just a little information about what you will be covering in the copywork application as well as the creative writing assignment. So here's the schedule for what you will be learning, what you will be reading, things like that. And then it takes you here with the notes and it goes in further. Like it starts with the spelling and it talks about the spelling, how the program's set up on like day one, two, three, and four for doing the sunlight spelling. And then it also takes you into the optional materials where in this case it's MCP Phonics C, which is listed right here. And that's another optional text. That's an extra workbook you could pick up to support your child in their phonics development. Because at this point in the program, hitting level three, Sunlight isn't necessarily teaching phonics. It's kind of teaching phonics with the spelling and spelling rules. So I mean, spelling and phonics are very much linked but there isn't like a phonics assignment anymore. It's really taking you through the MCP phonics to really hone those skills. And so in your instructor's guide, it gives you information for that, as well as the answer key for you to be able to easily see and correct your students' workbook pages. Handwriting is also grayed out, which means it's an optional subject for Sunlight. Again, it's an additional workbook that you could pick up and they give you the option of handwriting without tiers. And you can see it's not necessarily scheduled here. And if you want a schedule, you can go to Sunlight's website to get some handwriting schedules. This is just allowing you to be at whatever level your child is at, since that varies so much, then you can write it in. And the other optional workbook is a vocabulary development with Wordly Wise. And in level C, it is Wordly Wise B, which you can pick up separately again, but it does schedule it here and it gives you kind of some tips for that because you don't necessarily have to use these. There is vocabulary, especially in the history and literature portions of sunlight, but you might not be using that in particular. There is some vocabulary when you get to the readers as well, which I'll show you some of that. But this is the extra supplemental, wordly wise. And then you have readers and creative expression, and it, it talks through the creative expression 
And what I really like about the way sunlight teaches creative expression or what is included in its instructor's guides is a lot of times it will explain to you what's going on and then in these red boxes is something you could just straight up read to your kids or you could kind of paraphrase it, which is what I tend to do is I read through it and then I kind of change it up a bit and I talk to my son in a more natural way, but it is there for you word for word if you want and need that extra help and if you feel anxious about this. But I will get back to the creative expression here in just a second, because you can see in this first assignment that it's talking about the diamond notes, the first week of the diamond notes. So I'll get back to that in just a second. But irregardless, all the help is here for you. And then it goes on to week two and it continues to set up your chart that tells you your assignments as well as your readers. So it tells you what to read, which this is the first level we are actually following the schedule for the readers, which I'm super psyched about and it's working really well. And so you have that schedule. Let me flip to a week that is past the introduction for the diamond notes because I will go in depth with that in just a second. But let me show you maybe week 12 here and some of the associated student sheets that your child will need. And so again, it has your spelling, activity, MCP phonics, handwriting, wordly wise, and then the readers and the creative expression. So here is week 12 activity sheets. So you can see that the first thing up here is the copy work, which is always the first thing on the student sheets. And that can be found right here. It's always day one of the creative expression. And then day two of the creative expression is the copy work application. In this case, you're gonna be rewriting each sentence and replacing the words in bold with antonyms. And that is the teaching here. The creative application is antonyms. You will be teaching your child that. So here are the instructions for you to teach this lesson to them. And then here are the answers. So it looks like you will be drawing some stuff up on the board and working through antonyms. So it's a very short grammar type lesson for the creative expression and that then they will take their student worksheets and work on that. And then you flip it over and you can see that the creative expression or the writing composition portion of week 12 has to do with discussing directions and helping the kids figure out how to give directions and how to include enough details and how to speak to the audience as if they don't know how to do something. And the example here is how to cook spaghetti. And so then you can see for that day three where we're discussing the cooking spaghetti, you're also going to be brainstorming an idea for them to then take the next day and write out directions for something. So they get to pick their topic, you get to brainstorm how would you set that up. And then the day four for week 12 is to actually write out a simple task and they have space for that. And so you can see this is an example of a writing project which isn't necessarily needing a topic sentence and three main points and a concluding sentence, which you'll see is a lot of the other assignments. So I like how it mixes in useful writing prompts. So that is week 12 as well as the student sheets. So now I've flipped you to week 31 just to give you a feel for the rest of the year. And again, it's set up very similar with the spelling, phonics, and all the optional books, and then the readers and the creative expression. In this case, here is the copy work for that first week. And the creative expression is actually replacing the bold words with synonyms. I didn't mean to give you a very similar example. Let me give you an example of week 32. So this copy work application is all about commas and helping the kids learn when to use commas. So, but I'm just gonna go back to week 31, which is just funny that it's very similar to week 12 that I just showed you. But let's look at the creative expression or what they want the kids to do here. And so for the assignment here, they're getting, they are preparing to write a descriptive paragraph. And in this case, they're using the space below to create a web of ideas to explain why this person has a notorious trait. And so this is described all in here that some people are famous for a certain attribute or something like that. And for various reasons, and they then can come up with an idea where they can either use a real person or use their imagination and come up with a pretend person and write a descriptive paragraph from there. Okay, so that is another example of a week from language arts. And I do kind of keep forgetting to mention the readers, but again, it's all laid out for you and 
I will show you some of the discussion questions when I show you the readers. And at this point, I feel like it depends on the child if they are able to read it silently to themselves and you ask them the discussion questions or if they're still reading to you and you still discuss those questions as you are reading it with them. Probably depends on the child. Okay, so before I take you out of this flip through, I want to show you what's called the diamond notes, which is why I feel like this program is especially important of the elementary language arts programs for Sunlight because it teaches this structure for teaching writing, which involves a diamond, a baseball diamond, the pitcher's mound, first base, second base, third base, pitcher's mound being the main topic, and then the ideas that go with it, and then this is the concluding sentence. And as you go through the diamond notes, you start small, you start very basic. I'll bring in the week one for what my son did with the diamond notes. And basically all we were doing was coming up with a topic, in this case it's sports, and he was just to draw out three different sports that he liked. Tools, three different tools that he liked. And then the second day, it had more to do with gluing some pictures. So he was given a lot of pictures and he had to kind of sort them, sort the ideas. And in this case, it was clothes, food, weather, and transportation. And so he's working through that idea of how to set up a topic and have three main points, if you will. And then for week two, he is doing similar things. In this case, I believe he was ranking his ideas from most important to least important. So you can kind of see how this progresses. I won't talk totally through it, but as you go through the different units, the kids are learning how to rank ideas. They're learning how to then start writing concluding sentences that aren't focused on just like one idea, but to be able to take all the ideas and write a sentence, that's not the easiest thing. And so this really gives them the tools to do that. And then by the end, they're not using the diagram as much as just writing out their ideas in kind of list form and then putting it into a paragraph. And it gives lots of examples for that. And so it's really teaching kind of the backbone of how to write a good paragraph. And that's all done in this level three of sunlight. And this really spans the first five weeks of the program. And then they get to practice from then on. Like for instance, here's week 11. And you can see they're using some diamonds here to help them organize their thoughts before they are to write whatever the prompt is for that week, which I just love. I find it very helpful. That is a little look inside the instructor's guide plus the student sheets. Now let me take you through the readers because they're really my favorite. Well, not necessarily. I really do appreciate this whole program, but I love Sunlight Readers. So let me show you what comes with level three. Okay, guys, here are level three readers. I think I have them roughly in the right order of what you start with. And so it starts first with the long way to a new land. And this is an I can read at level three. And so you can see lots of pictures but still some challenging words. And it's a really good story about this family from Sweden that's moving to the US. And it continues the same family and this is the long way westward, very similar. Oh, and here, this is what I wanted to show you because I didn't get these out. These are in the back. They're not associated with the weekly guides in your language arts instructor guide. They're in the very back, which I like. I really like it because I pull them out and I use them as a bookmark. Then it has like, the days, like day seven, you're reading chapter one, and here's some questions. Here's a little overview. So if maybe you aren't reading it with your child, you can know what's going on, and then some questions to ask them. And so these are really helpful. It, it takes the experience for them and makes it a bit deeper. It also helps me as a teacher know what he's learning, what he's picking up. Okay, and then there's Prairie School. So you can see it's getting a little bit more words per page. Then the po writing the Pony Express, this has a lot more words, so I'm not sure if this is in the right location or if this is later in the year. But you can see a lot of these books are historical in nature, but not all of them. This one is a Clyde Robert Beulah. Oh, good, we just finished The Sword in the Tree and loved it. We finished that this summer. So this is called The Secret Valley. I really like his writing style and so did my son. So here we go. Oh, I see this is also a Clyde Robert Beulah book. 
There you go. And then the third grade detectives, I think you'll really like these. There's actually two. It's the kind that you flip over. So those will be fun. Let me show you inside. There's, <laughs> there's, lot, there's a few pictures, but that's kind of what it looks like inside. Then keep the lights burning, Abby. Beautiful color book. And then the chalk box kid. This is another Clyde Robert Beulah. That's so fun. I did not realize there were so many in this level three. So, as well as the paintbrush kid, these look to be very similar in nature. The Stepping Stones chapter books. All right, then you have the Littles, which is a fun idea. Viking Adventure, oh, another one of his books. This is a little thicker and longer, but I bet this will be amazing especially historically as we're gonna start getting to the Vikings here soon, probably. And this one's the house on Walenska Street. And Brave Kids, True Stories from America's Past. And A Question of Yams, A Missionary Story. That'll be fun. Okay, and then there is The Last Little Cat. That's what that one looks like. And Jake Drake Bully Buster. I bet my son's gonna like this one. And, oh, this we already read. This was one of the first ones. I think this was the first one, Clara and the Book Wagon. So that's another really easy one. So those are the readers. I just love them so much. And again, the discussion questions really help deepen the experience. But I think that is really all I wanted to show you inside of the Sunlight Language Arts Level 3. And let me just flip the camera back around and I will talk about a few more thoughts on the program. Okay, welcome back guys. So I hope that was helpful. I hope seeing inside the instructor's guide, I hope seeing the diamond notes and some of the like student activity sheets. I hope it helps you kind of wrap your head around how this program is set up, if it could potentially work for your kiddos. And so far it is working really well for my son. I feel like it's just enough structure with the diamond notes to help him with kind of his early composition, but not enough to really stifle any creativity or make him feel like he can't do it. Like I've said in a number of videos in the past, especially the one where I was talking about my review of level one and level two, I feel like the heart behind the language arts really resonates with me, that kind of natural style of learning, but yet it's not hands off, yet it, it still gives you as the teacher a lot of hand holding, a lot of help. And I feel like I took a while to kind of come to that, but I believe that wholeheartedly now. And so I'm really excited to use level three with my son kind of finishing out the spring year and probably into the fall. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know down below. Have you used any sunlight language arts? Are you curious about it? Do you have any other questions for me that I might be able to answer? Although the sunlight advisor line is super helpful if you do have questions as well. So that is what I have. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to. And otherwise I will see you guys in the next homeschool video. All right guys. Take care. Bye.